One of the very few things that's better than a cigar on a nice cool night in the fall or the first sip of coffee in the morning is writing malware code. And that's what I did basically all night last night. I'm exhausted right now. I'm pretty out of it, but I did get my Rust malware to start functioning as a rat. So let's talk about rats today. Back in the day, rat was a designation that was given to malware that basically its sole purpose was to take co control over a system. So all it really did was take commands from a server and run those commands on a victim. And that was kind of, you know, the purpose of them. They were this big spooky thing because people could take control of your computer and run commands, take screenshots, take control of your webcam, all of these other different things. There were a lot of really interesting things that happened with rats back in the day that ended up making their way into like spyware and, you know, even APT type malware. The rat that we have built or that I have built so far is very, very simple. And it's actually probably one of the worst types of rats that you can make. And we're going to talk a little bit about the command and control schema that I'm using here that makes it kind of shitty, basically. So with the rat, you've got a C2 and you've got a victim. So this C2, we're going to make red. So that is a C2. And you've got the victim. And this victim, we're going to make white. Okay, so you've got the C2 and the victim. And what a rat is, is a piece of malware that sits on the victim and it allows you to run commands. So you send it commands and it sends back responses, right? So command and control. That is basically the command and the control part. Um, now, there are a couple of different ways that you can set this up. You can have it to where the victim is always listening for commands and the C2 actively sends it commands or you can set it up in a much easier way, which is the way that I did it, which is a much crappier way, by making it to where the victim is constantly reaching out to the C2 server to get commands. So this is very, very common. It's a very common way to do C2s, but it makes it a lot easier to catch the rat because you see every couple of seconds, or if you're smart, you randomize the polling period, you see a you know, request out to this, you know, specific domain or this specific IP address. And then that sends back a response and then sep something happens on the victim machine. And then something is sent back to a similar domain or a similar, you know, IP address. So it becomes fairly easy to catch that. If you have something on a system that's just listening for commands, you can send those commands at any time at the night, you know, if you wanted to, if you were in Russia or in China and your victim were in the United States, you could wait until most of the sock or most of the personnel are at home sleeping. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. Or you can just kind of, you know, send it at odd intervals at odd hours and, you know, just kind of intersperse it to where it's a little bit harder to catch. Um, we have done it the easy way where the victim will reach out to the C2 first, see if the C2 has a command and the C2 will send the command back and then the victim will send the response to that command back to the C2. So that's basically how this, this interplay works. Now, we don't have any of the really nice fancy commands that I'm gonna be building in later. Um, I really just wanted this to be kind of a proof of concept so that I could build off of it later on. Let's take a look at the malware first. And if we look at main and we go to loop, so this is the main command loop. All of this is happening within one thread. Typically what you would have is you would have a command thread and then you would have another thread that's going to do different things or monitor, you know, keystrokes and send those off or, you know, you would kind of have different threads doing different things. Um, right now this is baby's first malware still, so we're going to kind of lay it out in a much simpler manner. So what we're doing here, let's see, we can go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, now all of our squigglies are gone. Um, so we are running this run command. What this run command function is going to do, we're going to look at it here in a second, is that it's going to reach out to the C2, check to see if there's any command to run. If there's no command returned from the C2, then the command res is just no command. If there is a command, then we are going to send off the result. So if this command result is anything other than no command, we're going to send it off to the C2, and then we're going to repeat the loop every three seconds. So let's take a look at funk. That's where all of our functionality goes and mod.rs. Um, we are going to reach out to the command and control server here to the directive slash get directive. I'm making all of these URLs kind of vague and kind of a way to show how this can look. If you saw a get request to, 
you know, some domain slash directive slash get directive. It doesn't immediately scan, like it doesn't immediately scream malware here. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, and we'll take a look at the C2 here in a second. That's where kind of the magic is going on. Um, so it's going to try to get the command from here. And let's see, then we're going to get no command here. Um, if the command that is returned from the C2 is not found, then it's going to return no command because that's basically there's there was no command found there. Um, we're going to split it by white space and the first thing within the command is going to be the actual command that we're going to run. So we've got a delete command so that, can, so that we can delete things on the system. It's going to parse things out, run it through command.exe and that's you know going to return the output and you know that is then sent off to the C2 as well. Um, and then we've got deer, so we can actually run um, deer to list the directory of a place. And we've got echo. So echo is what I'm using for you know the actual demo here in a second. That's going to show that you can just echo things out to the um, echo things out to the console and then return that result back to the C2. Very very boring, but it works. Um, now let's take a look at the C2. If we look at the C2, we've added several different um, several different endpoints here at the bottom. So let's go down to the bottom here. We've got that git directive, which is bound to git command, add directive, which is bound to add command, and response, which is bound to delete command. So basically, you add the command with add directive, right? Then that command runs on the system because it is basically taken from the C2 onto the victim via git command. And then as soon as a response is sent, then it will run delete command, which also will output it currently just to the terminal. So if we go over here to cargo, I'm going to show you what this looks like. Um, so let's go ahead and grab it and run it. So this is going to run the malware itself. No command to run here. And if we open up that's my Monero wallet, don't need to open that up. If we open up Postman, we can send an add directive with the body, please, echo please subscribe. So if we send this off, that is going to add the directive to an SQLite database, which is then going to be fetchable by the malware itself. So if we press add directive, and then as you can see, it output it right there. And that was then sent back to the C2 server if we can open that up, we see that that was sent back to the C2 server right here. Let's see. Yeah, so right there is where it's actually printing it out. So I've got this delimiter right here in the middle of the standard error, which would be on the left side of that delimiter if there were an error, and standard out right there. So we can see if there was any error in you know what we were running. I'm actually going to try this out real quick. I've never tested this before. So let's just run deer dot slash. Let's see if that works. I've never actually tried this on my own malware. So let's see if it works. Successfully added the command that may crash. They may have crashed something, which is fine because it's untested. Oh, it looks like we may have hung, which is interesting. There we go. So result of command invalid switch. So it doesn't like some input here. Let's see if we can get it to work. Anyways, this is all stuff that is untested. So I'm not just gonna spend a ton of time here. Um, let's see if we can just run, I think it's PWD. No, it's, that's not gonna work. Deer, let's just run deer with nothing. So that said, okay. Oh, yep, we got a panic. Yeah, that's not a big deal. Oh, it probably panicked because it's expecting two different arguments. So if we restart that, let's see if I can just run deer dot, and it never deleted it. Okay, that's, uh, I will figure that out later on. But essentially, that's what a rat is supposed to do. And you can kind of go ahead and you can see from this testing that this is one of the flaws in the current way that I've got it laid out is that if, if something crashes, now you know your victim is obviously unreachable and it's going to be unreachable until something restarts. So there's currently no crash protection there. If the PC restarts, we've added persistence, so that would restart the malware and everything would be fine there, but you've gotta wait until a restart and that may be never because a lot of these servers are you know, endpoints that you're attacking have a long uptime. So 
there's lots to work on here, but we've got the beginnings of rat functionality. Um, next, I'm going to be building out a way to list processes and a way to actually list the directory like successfully. And then we can move on to a lot of other fun stuff. That's about it. Join the Discord. Take it easy. Peace.